Hey, I don't know if anybody's hearing me right now. We're gonna mumble. Or, I'm gonna stumble my way through this. I'm gonna turn on my uh, my remote mic. See what happens here. Uh, <clears throat> what I've got to do is exit the DJI Mobile app here, and I am still live. Let's see now if I can get my wireless to connect. Bear with me. Hmm. Well, um, I thought I had this yesterday. Sorry, people. If there's anybody watching right now. Um, well, you're just going to have to muddle through hearing my voice this way right now, I think. Um, just sorry about the echo and if my furnace kicks on, uh, forgive me. Just going to make sure that I'm actually live here. Let's see. As I'm live. And there I am. So anyway, what I'm doing here, uh, just to kind of play around with this live test at the same time, I'm doing some work in here, is I've been working on some uh, so, anyway, prints lately. Oh, I've got to turn that off. Sorry. Play around with this live test at the same time. I was telling you not to leave the radio on. Um, I've been working on a, a print lately. It's a gum over platinum print. I, uh, I did this um, as an online print offer for... Um, through my newsletter and had a really great response to it for which I'm very thankful. Um, and, um, and, uh, let's see, this is not following me. Let's try to get me doing this facial follow again. There we go. Sorry, I'm trying to get this all worked out. Um, anyway, so I did this, uh, this print, I was, a, uh, an online offer and it was really nice. I had a great response to it and it's a gum over platinum. And, uh, so what I've done is, is most of them are done. Most of them are shipped out at this point, but I'm still working on this because I'm going to keep the offer alive. And if I leave this live right now, um, I don't know what just happened, but it just decided to stop using, following me again. Um, I may not be able to continue doing this, uh, as far as the, uh, the active track goes. Uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun because, you know, I can do this kind of thing when I'm printing and I can take you over here to the sink and I can work in the sink and, you know, theoretically I can go back over here and I can work over here at my light table and, you know, that's what I'm going to be doing today if I can, uh, but um, I might keep losing you. I'm not really sure. Maybe what I have to do is just keep moving, right? Keep moving so it knows that I'm doing this. Um, but anyway, back to this. Been working on these prints. Um, most of them are shipped out. I'm going to keep the offer alive. Um, I still have a few of these to ship out and I'm adding different gum layers to them. So basically what I've got is a basic palladium layer that I lay down and then I size this paper. And all of this you'll be able to see in some videos that I'm working on right now anyway. Um, but uh, I'm not quite done with it and I probably should be doing that rather than screwing around doing this right now. But uh, I'm always trying to figure something new out. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm laying down the different gum layers on these right now. So I am going to be masking this one off and I'm going to coat it with gum and I'm going to kind of keep you with me while I'm doing it as long as the battery runs in this, in this uh, pocket Osmo. Um, so let's see here. I'm looking down online and it doesn't really look like there's four of you watching. So I really appreciate whoever's watching right now. Um, is active track still on and you still following me? Let's try that again. Every once in a while, I'm going to reach up and tap the camera like this, I guess. So I'm going to take this over here. I'm going to do my masking on it. Um, I have shown you how to do this in other videos. And if I keep this live, the link to my masking will be up here. 
but what I do is I just use removable tape. I like using this blue stuff from Scotch. It's uh, removable stuff. People use it in a lot of scrapbooking, that kind of thing. Uh, and I like to mask my edges with that. But sometimes it's, it's important to kind of dull the tape a little bit, even though it is removable. So what I do is I take a regular piece of paper that I'm going to be printing on here. And I like to stick the tape to it and pull it up a couple of times just to kind of dull it a little bit and add a little bit of the paper fiber into it so that it doesn't stick to the print when I'm working on it. And then when I peel it up, it peels the sizing off the paper and it sometimes can be not pretty. Um, but anyway, and then what I do is I take and I go over and I just mask up to the edge of the image that I've already printed. And the, the idea behind this is so that I can... Uh, I can coat it with the uh, with the gum layer and not spill everything over into my white areas and, of the paper. And you know, I'm a little angry kind of about that stuff. I like to have clean edges. No, not everybody does, so you don't have to do this. It's just something that I like to do. And uh, especially, you know, I like to do it at least with the gum layer that I put over it, so that the gum and the different colors of gum aren't all splattered around the white edges of the paper. So uh, anyway. I can see that I'm still alive and that, you know, maybe got my head cut off or something like that in the picture. It looks like it's working out pretty well. And I'll, I'll, I'll check this out afterward and make sure that it's okay for the future. Because what I really like to work up to doing is, uh, you know, some live workshops with you. Now my furnace just kicked on, so I might be, uh, I might be competing with that. I'll try to work out the audio thing. I had that worked out the other day because I've got a little, uh, you know, a uh, lavalier mic here, and it runs wirelessly into the, uh, supposedly, into the Osmo, and I've had it working. Just don't know why it's working, not working right now. So anyway, I've got one more of these to get on. Oh. I don't know if there's anybody watching right now that might have been, you know, following me for years online as I've been using the internet, you know, kind of ridiculously at some times over the years. But I've been using it to, uh, you know, as a promotional tool, but also just because of the firsts, the things that you can do before anybody else. And way back in the day, I don't know, it would have had to have been in the late 90s that I did this, I had uh, a camera set up in my darkroom. And I used to let it run live while I was printing. And I couldn't really talk to you uh, like I am now. I mean, there was no YouTube even then. But, uh, you know, I conceived that someday I might be able to do this. And, you know, it's great. Here I am. I'm at my uh, studio here out in the middle of the woods in northern Michigan. And, you know, fortunately, we were part of the pilot program that set up uh, fiber optic. So I've got fiber optic coming right into the building. So, you know, this, these live broadcasts are possible that because of that. And also, you know, me doing large videos and things like that, they can be uploaded real easy. Anyway, I've got this all masked off as you can see. Let me touch this again and see if it'll catch up with my face. There we go. Um, so I've got it all masked off as you can see. And then I put, uh, you know, extra pieces of paper on the edge here just to mask it all the way. So what I'm going to do now is um, take a piece of clear acrylic and I lay the acrylic down here. Um, you might not be able to see it. And uh, I also, I'll take uh, old film containers, um, Kodak film containers, plastic film containers. I like to use these for this pro part of the process. And what I'm going to do is I'm adding a gum layer uh, there. So with that gum layer includes a little bit of ammonium dichromate uh, at a 30% solution. And I'm going to be mixing that 50-50 along with my, um, my, uh, my pigment mixed in with gum arabic. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake this up. I've got a little bit of French ochre. I like to use this color in my highlights and that's what I'm kind of exposing for right now. I'll explain that more in the how-to video. This is just kind of a demonstration. So I take uh, my gum arabic and I squeeze out, you know, probably a quarter inch in the bottom of my, uh, in the bottom of my, uh, film container here. I set that off the side. And then I'm going to take a little bit of ammonium dichromate. Normally I'd be wearing gloves, but I'm pretty careful with this and I'm not going to right now. And then I want to add an equal amount of 30% ammonium dichromate, which I've done there. I seal that stuff back up. 
put it off to the side, and I'm going to put the lid on the uh, on the film container and shake it up, mix it up a bit. Now here's another little trick that I do that I haven't really talked much about, and uh, I like to take a little bit of tween, and uh, it's it's like a 20% tween 20, and uh, I use it at a 20% strength. And I'll drop a couple of drops of that in there as well. And what this is, it's an emulsifier and it basically helps things mix together that don't normally mix together well. And sometimes when I, when I brush out um, this gum on the paper afterward, it'll create little eyelets where, you know, sometimes the solutions don't mix quite right and they congeal into little eyelets that I have to smooth out later on. I found that if I use a little bit of tween in there that it helps in that process. And it doesn't impede the print at all, it doesn't change the print at all. So I'll mix that back up in there as well. And then, I'm not sure if you can see this down here, but I'll dump that out onto my acrylic. And then I'm going to move slowly over here. It's not following me, so I'm just gonna go out of the frame right now and grab my rollers. And what I use is these, uh, these rollers. Um, I just get them at Home Depot. Uh, they are just sponge rollers and what I use is use one to apply and then I use one to smooth it out. So um, what I do is I'll apply a little bit of this to the roller as you can see. Now it looks real orange because that's what the ammonium dichromate does. Now I do have a little bit of yellow in the pigment so it will look a little bit this color but you're going to see a lot of orange right now whether you're using pink pigment or whether you're using blue pigment because the dichromate overpowers that, but the dichromate washes out as you're processing the paper. So what I'm going to do is just going to roll this out onto the uh, paper. And as you can see, it rolls really nicely, or if you can see, I think you can see. My video is a little bit of lag time from yours. Now sometimes if you use the tween, it'll make all these little frothy bubbles in there, and then you, it's easy enough to take the clean, um, the clean roller and just run it over that and it just kind of smooths everything out really nicely. Now, what I'm doing is I'm not trying to make this a colored photograph, by the way, and I'm not trying to like put down a thick layer of pigment on here. What I'm trying to do is just put on like a thin veil of a, tone, of a color in there, which adds a little bit of depth and tonality and color to a normally, you know, just black and white. Um, uh, platinum print or plating print. So I got that all set up on there nicely and then what I do is I take off my masking and uh, let's see if I can get it to follow me again. There you go. So I take my masking off. Yeah, the camera's staying with me. I think as long as I move fairly slowly and deliberately that you can stick with me. So I'll pull off my masking and as you can see this is where you don't want it lifting the sizing off the paper. So there my mask is coming off. And as you can see, maybe you can or maybe you can't, there's a little bit of bleed on the edges, but that's just the way it goes. Now, what I do is I come over here and I've got underneath here, I've got a drying rack that you can't see and I'll put that on the drying rack. But, just like any good cook TV show, you know, Julia Childs or whatever, I have one that I worked on a little bit earlier and it's right here and it's already dry. Now what happens is when you've got that print and you've got the gum on there, it is light sensitive, but there's not enough UV light kicking around in here right now to hurt anything, um, to expose in the print or anything like that. So, what I'm gonna do is take this one that I coated earlier and as you can see, it's got the orange dichromate coating on it. It's all dry, it's ready to go. Now what I do with it now is I take it over here to the light table and I have to grab my, my contact printing frame over here. Let's see if you stick with me. Yeah, you're with me. Okay, so I just have to be deliberate and slow with this and keep you seeing my face and it keeps up with me. So this is my contact printing frame and here is where I do the, uh, the mixing uh, where I match the negative to the, to the print. Now this is a digital negative that I've done here. And some of you have seen my video on digital negatives probably. Um, 
Anyway, this is a digital negative that I've made on my inkjet printer, but it's a real high quality, real high resolution negative. And the reason that I do these now, or anybody does them using platinum and palladium or any of these gum processes, is because we need a negative that's the size of the final print because we're working with UV light and therefore we can't project that light like we do on a larger where you're projecting a small negative onto a larger piece of paper. We can't do that so we need a piece of paper or a piece of negative that's the same size and that's what I've done here is created this. Now this particular image wasn't originally a film image this was done digitally I shot it with a Nikon camera and uh, sounds like a song right? But uh, I shot it with my Nikon, I digitized it, I worked it out through Photoshop and through Lightroom and I made a digital negative of it that we're now turning into a print. Or I've already turned into a print with my, uh, with my uh, platinum layer. So what I need to do is I need to register this original negative that I printed the platinum, platinum layer with. I'm going to need to register this with the print. And, uh, and so therefore when I make another exposure it exposes the gum layer into it and it leaves behind a little bit of that color that I told you about. Um, now what happens is the longer I expose it, the more that color goes into the highlights. So what I'm going to do is this original exposure was for eight minutes and I'm going to do eight minutes again on this, um, on this gum layer. So what I'm going to do right now is turn on my light table and register the negative again. So um, what I do is I just make sure that I've lined it up perfectly again. Now sometimes people use registration pins. Um, if you're using doing a larger print, sometimes you might want to do that. But for doing a smaller print like this, I can register by hand good enough. And the other thing is, is that very often you might on the gum layer want to get it just a little bit off register because that way it helps add a little bit of a ghosty edge and, a, and more of a depth, more of a three-dimensional feel to the image you really can't perceive with your eye, but it softens the image a little bit and adds a little bit of depth to it. So I've got it nicely registered here. I'll turn off the light and I'll take another piece of my removable tape and I'll tape it onto an area of the negative that doesn't print so that it will uh, not print into the print. Now I'm going to take this and put it down face into my contact printing frame because these contact printing frames, they add pressure against the negative and the paper. And as you can see, if you put it face down, you've got it ready to go in here with the negative contacted with the paper, emulsion to emulsion. Now, uh, these contact printing things are great if you, ha if you have them. If you don't have them, I have a friend down the hill that's been building these for me, and I'm going to be offering them pretty soon at a pretty reasonable price for a nice handmade, um, handmade uh, contact printing frame. But again, this isn't a commercial. I'm just showing you how to do this. So uh, I take this and I'm going to go over here to my contact printing, uh, my contact printer, which is a UV light source inside of here. I'm going to put it at eight minutes and open it up and make sure all my lights are on. And then I'm going to put this into my print frame or print frame into my uh, plate burner and I'm going to leave it in there now. So it's got to be there for eight minutes. And, uh, you know, so what I'd like is if you'd wait for me for that eight minutes and maybe I can fill up that time talking to you about some stuff. Um, uh, again, you know, I'm going to hopefully do more of these. Uh, this is really the first time out. I've done a few tests of it. Maybe some of you have seen them. I haven't left them online because they're, you know, they're kind of embarrassing and I don't even know if this one's going to survive really. But um, this is kind of what I'm hoping to do a little bit more with my channel is to do some of these live things and just to bring you into the dark room when I'm printing during the day. Um, you know, I'm in here every day working. It's part of the job. You know, I mean, that's what what happens when you're doing this, when you do this for a living. And uh, anyway, um, I'm in here most days, so I might, I might do this again, you know, back to the old days of when I used to have a live cam running. Um, you know, I'll try to do things like not snivel and not, uh, you know, yell at my dog and not stick my finger in my nose or anything while you're on. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of fun, fun to have you in here while I'm doing this. Uh, you know, as opposed to having, you know, what would be really great is to have a real workshop going on in here. Which brings me to the next thing is, you know, we're in the dead of winter right now. It's freezing cold outside right, right now, but uh, I'm going to be working up here to the point where I'm going to start having some workshops here more regularly. We had two of them last year, well, more than that, but we had two of them in the fall. Um, I'm going to start having a few of them again earlier, I think, than Photostock. Um, 
Photo stock is an event that I run up here every year, and some of you may have been there before, and maybe you haven't been, but it's a really cool event. And unfortunately, we haven't been able to have it for the last two years because of the, uh, you know, because of what's been going on health-wise and things. So, but I'm going to try it again this year. And what I've done is I've um, I live really close to a little town, a little village called Cross Village, Michigan, here up on the shores of Lake Michigan. And uh, normally we have the event at a place called the Birchwood Inn and now the Birchwood Inn is still where people are invited to stay at a discount, um, that kind of thing. But uh, this year I've kind of rented out the town of Cross Village, the little, uh, it used to be a one room schoolhouse that was working up until the 80s. Um, it was like a kindergarten through sixth grade where a lot of the local kids went. Um, but now it's a community center and there's also a little town hall right there and they're all, they're both kind of on a little town park. So I've kind of, I've rented those buildings for our print viewing for Photostock and for some of the presentations that we might have. So back to what Photostock is for you that haven't been to it. It's an annual gathering that I've been doing here since 2006. Um, and it's kind of a check your ego at the door. We have a lot of well-known photographers come and not so well-known, even some beginners and things. But what we try to do is make it all inclusive. Um, you know, it's not about what you know or who you know, it's about what we do. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And people come up here and they camp, they stay at the Birchwood Inn. Usually every year I try to invite a couple of photographers of note um, that, uh, that I bring in. Um, but we might not be doing that this year just because of the situation we're in because it's still hard to get people to travel. Um, but for instance, we were supposed to have Larry Fink here and Larry wasn't able to make it, obviously, because we had to shut down because of COVID, uh, the, first, uh, the first year of COVID. And then last year, I decided not to have it because we were still in the throes of this and nobody wanted to travel. Um, this year, uh, you know, we're hoping it works, but rather than try to arrange the travel and arrange hiring somebody of note to come in here to, uh, to join us, um, I'm thinking about going kind of back to the original days where we just kind of fill in the void ourselves. and. You know, we're going to have an outdoor cookout. We're going to have our print viewing on Saturday, which this year I'm going to invite locals to, um, the, the local population up here. People here are really cool, and, and there's a lot of artisans, and there's a lot of artists, and there's a lot of um, people that make food and things. So my idea is to have a few vending booths there outside and have a few of us outside showing our prints, but also show our prints inside of the town hall and inside of the community center and invite the community at large to come and be part of it, to view our prints, to see our work. Uh, the people that are part of it and showing their work, they can sell their work if they want. It's, you know, it's no, no skin off my nose, no problem to us. Um, that's what we all kind of aspire to is to share our work with other people and to have it collected. Um, but anyway, that's what it's about. And this year it's going to be June, uh, let's see, what are we, June 24th to the 26th in Cross Village. Now, you can check it out at photostockfest.com. Now, I don't have much of the website up right now other than the photograph and the announcement of dates. Pretty soon we will have um, registration open up, which is just going to be a, an unpaid registration, which is pretty much just to get you on the, the mailing list and to give me an idea of what kind of attendance we might have. Um, in the past, we've had up to 100 people come, and they come from all over the world, but I'm really not sure that's going to happen this year, so I want to try to gauge what's going to happen based upon pre-registration. So that's going to open up pretty soon. Um, official registration is set to open up on March 15th, although I might push that back to April 1st. We'll see how it goes. Um, but anyway, some of the other events that we're going to have here is the normal... You know, we're up here in the tip of northern Michigan, and it's beautiful here. I'm two miles from the lake shore of uh, Lake Michigan. We're 15 miles away from the bridge that goes to the Upper Peninsula, which has its own world of wonders up there. There's a lot of stuff to photograph in this area. And I think that part of one of the activities that we're going to do this summer is to have kind of a photographic scavenge hunt, scavenger hunt that will take people through clues and things around the area to see some of the beautiful things that there are to photograph, and then to photograph something at each stop. Uh, as part of the scavenger hunt. Um, that's an idea that I'm working on. I'm also working on perhaps renting a couple of vans though, so that we can go out as groups and do day trips out and photograph, that kind of thing. Um, you know, in, in the past we used to do demonstrations here, which we still may do. There might be some people bringing their wet plate equipment and, you know, we might do a platinum demonstration like I'm doing right here. 
but uh, more likely we will just try to do some things where you know we're close to the beach, we're close to the waterfront, where we might go out and do some shooting and some collective, um, you know, just enjoying it collectively in some way. Uh, so stay tuned on that. Photostock photostockfest.com is where to look. I'll put a link below if I keep this video up. Um, but it's a really good time and I really, really hope that you'll consider coming. Uh, you know, maybe I should be careful what I wish for. Maybe a lot of people will come this year. But uh, Northern Michigan, it's a gorgeous place. Look up Petoskey, Harbor Springs, Cross Village on your maps and you'll see where we are. We're surrounded by water. We've got, uh, you know, this way is Lake Michigan, two miles. That way, maybe 20, 30 miles is Lake Huron. 15 miles to the north is the Straits of Mackinac. The Mackinac Bridge, which is one of the most impressive, you know, um, suspension bridges in the world, really. It used to be the longest. It's probably causeway to causeway, six or seven miles. But anyway, you cross that over into the Upper Peninsula, and the Upper Peninsula has a world of wonders. There's pictured rocks. There's the Keweenaw Peninsula. There's um, Lake of the Clouds. There's waterfalls, endless waterfalls, uh, Tequamanon Falls, which is one of the bigger ones. Anyway, we've got a lot to do, and uh, I really hope you'll give it a give it a look. Um, anyway, print just clicked; it's ready to go. So let me go over here and get it out. So I've put eight minutes on this right now, and let's see if you'll stick with me. Let me just get you back on face track here. Is it working? Nope, it's not. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to get the print out of here. And so as you can see, I've got the negative off, I've got the print right here. Let's see if you stick with me. Now what I've got over here is a bath set up of kind of mildly warm water. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is dunking the print in there to develop it. Now it's not the kind of a developing process that you might think of. Basically with the gum, you've, with the gum Arabic mixed with the ammonium dichromate, when it's, when it's, um, mixed with the UV light, it hardens the areas where the light goes into and therefore those areas stay back. And when you wash it out, the areas that haven't been exposed so much will start to wash out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this print as it is and I'm going to dunk it here in the water. And basically in this first bath, I put it in face up at first and you'll see that it kind of turns yellow really quick. What that is, it's the ammonium dichromate washing out. Now, you've got ammonium dichromate in here now, and you don't want to be touching it with your bare hands. I've got some tongs here that I use. And so basically, the first bath is where a lot of the ammonium dichromate comes out of the print. And that's what's happening. I can see it pooling up here, and you might be able to see that as well. Um, I'd grab the camera and rig it down here, but I think I might screw everything up and lose you. But I can see that the dichromate is washed out quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this print over. And I'm just going to let it sit like that and let the dichromate fall out of the print. You just use gravity to let it fall into the bottom of the tray. Now this first bath, which does have the ammonium dichromate in here, and ammonium dichromate is a, is a caustic agent. It's an oxidizer. It's a cancer-causing cancer agent. It's listed as that. Um, you just want to be careful with it and not touch it with your hands. And if you do, wash it off real well. Normally I use gloves when I'm working this, or if I'm teaching a workshop, I will have everybody use gloves. But I'm extremely careful of what I'm doing and I'm really conscious of if it touches me and washing it off right away. So I'm, I'm okay not having gloves on right now. So let me lift this up out of here. And what you're going to see now is a print where the dichromate is, wash, is washed out. You can see some yellow coming down, which is, the, which is the, uh, the, the pigment in here. But now you can see how this print... I'm hoping you can see this print, is uh, got some nice tonality, it's a nice color to it right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it over and I'm gonna put it into another clean tray. Now this clean tray is one that I'm not so much worried about the dichromate because a lot of the dichromate comes out in the first bath. So in the second bath here, I'm gonna start to see more of the actual color that I've put into the print start showing up. And it's looking really nice. Very often, by the time you hit the second bath, you're, you're less concerned with the document coming out, as I said, it's just kind of controlling the color. And I'm really liking the way it looks. So I'm just going to let it soak here for a little longer and just take some of the extra pigment out that, and extra gum out that hasn't been, hasn't been exposed. 
Um, but by this time, you've got that a lot. You know, I mean, sometimes depending on your exposures and longer exposures, you have to let it soak in the baths longer to let it take the pigment out. But this was kind of a short exposure, and I'm kind of being real selective about what I'm doing here. So it's not so much, it's not taking so long to develop out. Now the, the thing is you can leave it in the water for a long time and you can just wash the gum right out and start over again basically. But I don't want to do that. And I've got, you know, the color is pretty, pretty stable now. So what I would normally do is move it into another clear bath, but just for the, the you know, the purposes of this video, I'm just going to take this and rinse, just rinse the surface of the print. It's ready to hang. Now, the thing is, you've got to babysit it a little bit because what's going to happen is sometimes a little bit more of the pigment will flow out, get into the corners while it's, while it's um, draining. But while it's draining actual liquid off here, I want to keep it hanging like this from the corners. You can always dab the corners with a little bit of paper towel if you want. Once it's stopped dripping, you can take it and you can lay it flat on a drying screen and not worry about the, uh, the pigment pooling up in areas. But anyway. What I'm going to do is hang this up, but for right now, I'm going to show you what we got here. And it's really pretty beautiful. You can see the different tonality in here now and the different depth, I think. You certainly can in, purpose, in person, and that's what real prints are all about, is you know seeing an actual three-dimensional object, or two-dimensional, and holding it in your hands and actually looking and seeing you know, what's done with it. It's beautiful, gosh. Now, another thing is you can see some relief in it because some of the areas where the gum is laid heavier than other areas, you can see a bit of relief. Now, sometimes that stays until it's dry a little bit, but while it's wet, you can see that and enjoy it and see the different relief on the paper when you hold it up to the light at certain angles. So anyway, let's see if you stick with me here. Yeah, you're sticking with me. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put it up and let it hang dry. And... Uh, that's kind of it for now, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cut this short because it looks like it kind of worked and I don't want to, um, you know, push my luck here and see what I've got and, uh, you know, I'll look it over and see if I leave it online or not. But uh, if you've been watching, you know, it looks like there's nine people watching, so that's great. I appreciate you looking and I appreciate you, uh, you, uh, I might have lost you here. I appreciate you, um, I appreciate your time and watching. Uh, yeah, there we go. I appreciate your time watching this and, uh, you know, muddling through with me. Hopefully I'll be a little better at this the next time. Um, I can see that some people have done a little bit of uh, commenting here, so I'm going to have this look and see what everybody said. Hey, Daryl, how you doing? Oh, you're doing fine, thank you. And Jerry, hey, thanks, Jerry. Yeah, I'm going to do a second layer, definitely. Uh, I've been doing second layers on all of these. Basically, what I've been doing is a... Uh, is a layer of ochre uh, for the highlights, and then in the, in the color or in the shadows, I've been doing a little bit of a blue, a, a dark blue that goes into the shadows, and it's it's kind of almost imperceptible, but it does give a kind of a split toning, uh, um, uh, split toned, <laughs> a split toned feel to it, um, and it's pretty cool. It's almost like doing split toning with silver printing, where you would put selenium, say, into the highlights and put, or I'm sorry, sepia into the highlights and put selenium into the shadows. So it kind of cools down the shadows and it warms up the highlights. So yeah, I am going to do that, but I'm not going to do that in this video. Um, there is a print here that I've been working on, and this is something that I shot uh, a few weeks ago. I was in Venice, and this print I've added a second color to now, and it's looking really special. I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of got a reddish uh, purple I've put into the shadow areas, and it's very, it's almost imperceptible, but it's there. If you put this in, I wish I had a comparison of a palladium print that I didn't print in this manner, because you could see the difference. It's quite a bit different. And as a lot of people say, and a good friend of mine, Carrick says, is uh, like, you'll never look at a real palladium print in the same way again once you've done a gum over of it. It kind of doesn't look finished until you add the other, the other layers to it. So anyway, this is another print that's going on. Look below, you can order this other print that I'm working on uh, through my website, and I'll have a link there. Um, there is gonna be a series of these videos coming out. There's already three of them on the gum over process that show you how to mix the ammonium diachromate, shows you how to mix and apply the sizing, and shows you how to mix the pigment and the gum together. So the whole video is in process right now, and I'll be having that out there pretty soon for you as well. So anyway, for now, 
I really appreciate your time. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. I don't know if you can do that in live stuff. And I appreciate you for, uh, for talking here. Daryl, Seth, everybody, Jerry, it's really great to have you on here. I'm really happy that you've uh, given, me, you've given me your time and watched along. So uh, with that, I'll talk to you later, all right? Have a good time. Uh, maybe doing some of your own printing. Bear with me while I shut this down because I'm not really even sure how to shut this thing off. So uh, anyway, take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Take care, you guys.